Nigeria, no doubt, is in an election year as activities leading to the 2023 general election slated for the 25th of February and 11th of March next year have commenced in earnest with the official flag of election campaigns by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Political campaigns are one of the most important aspects of electioneering as they provide avenues for political parties and their flag bearers to meet the electorate, explain their manifestos and make promises to the people, all geared towards the development of the nation. In the past, politicians often seize the opportunities provided during campaigns to throw banters at the opposition, most often in a comic way through singing and dancing. <laughs> This is the first time in the history of the country that political campaigns will be lasting 150 days, which is in accordance with Section 94, Subsection 1 of the Electoral Act 2022, as campaigns had hitherto been held for 90 days. In the recent past, Nigeria has been divided on tribal, ethnic, and religious lines, and the social media have been employed by politicians and their supporters to find the embers of disunity among the people. Most Nigerians have consistently expressed concerns over the dangerous trend which many described as unhealthy for the peaceful coexistence of the people. They want politicians to make their campaigns issue-based. In our Nigerian society today, most politicians use this religion and ethnicity as a weapon of way of winning election because uh, most of our leaders today they said divide and rule so they will use ethnicity or religion so that they can win the heart of our uh, people so that they can vote for them and win election we should unite ourselves so that our country will be better and smoothly. We want peace. Let the campaign go on with peace. We don't want anything violent. We don't want fight. And other than people, they should allow people to go into their work in a peaceful way. So the campaign too should go in a peaceful way. That HP triggers religious sentiments, religious violence. So if, if they will try as much as they can to, to unite the people as one, to tell them of the, the importance of politics, election as well, it's a, it's a good call. In their separate submissions, Comrade Michael Ebonfi, Professor Chijoki Uduna, and Mr. Mohamed Bamibadi maintained that it is high time Nigerians engaged the would be leaders on practical solutions to the many challenges bedeviling the country. They mentioned areas such as galloping inflationary trend, lingering crisis between the federal government and the academic staff union of universities, ASO, state police, fiscal federalism, insecurity, among others. All those eight speeches will not help us. They will not. Because if we don't fact check our information, we should be very, very careful in spreading them. And that's why we have a lot of things on ground now. Say, if anybody should say anything that is not really right, the person should be arrested. Some may have a very good agenda manifesto. Some, may, somebody, you know, some of them may be very good. They, they, they may have very co good command of uh, uh, speech and eloquent, but will, that be able, will they be able to, trans, uh, to, to, to translate that to real good governance? Actually, everywhere, there are self-evidence. For instance, we know that that's on strike for seven months now. And there have been issues with regards to how the strike is actually being treated. We are actually having a very strong, you know, economic in, in terms of high inflation rates, cost of everything is actually increasing, while salaries have been stagnant. The issue of security is actually being prone. Even the issue of even identity, in terms of loving ourselves as a Nigerian coexistence and what are you know, each time relation comes up, people throw up a lot of things about how an Igbo man was given job in Lagos, how a Yoruba person was given job and whatever, all kinds of things like that. In a country where all of us are actually Nigerian citizens and those things shouldn't have actually uh, played. You know, so these are these are the German issues that politicians should be tackling on how they'll be able to solve Nigeria problem. We have problem with education. How do you actually make education, schooling to be educated, not just going to school, but making sure that the certificate people obtain transits to solving problem productivity? How do you actually handle the issue of actual strike? So within a period of eight years, you know, at this time, 2022, that universities are shut down 
for twenty for 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 seven months. You know, it's unheard of in any other part of the country. So politicians should actually be talking about how are we actually going to solve this problem. Our expectation is I personally, I expect a campaign based on issue issue the campaign should be issue based. It shouldn't be name calling. I expect each candidate. And at least we have like 18 presidential candidates. I expect something tangible from them. I expect them to come out with a feasible and viable solution to the challenges that we are facing. I expect them to, to bring out a manifesto that we bring out that will bring us out of this mess that we find ourselves in the same vein in a bid to strengthen the country's democratic process the independent national electoral commission INEC, had held series of meetings with stakeholders in the political space on the need to adhere strictly to the electoral act 2022. the INEC chairman professor mamu jakubo had made it clear that any politician or political party who runs foul of the law will be dealt with accordingly. The Commission will continue to deepen its focused engagement with stakeholders. The media play a critical role in ensuring a more effective public enlightenment on the provision of the Electoral Act 2022 in particular and other aspects of the electoral process in general. A legal practitioner, Mr. Bodhi Babalola, who threw his weight behind an decision to monitor politicians and curb the minutes of hate speech and fake news, said the Electoral Act is against such, adding that politicians must learn to play the game by the rules. The Act expects every politician to go there or to campaign based on what you can do, what you have done in the past and for which you want to be judged. But let me say this. The line between a hate speech and a reference to antecedents can be very thin. If somebody was in government yesterday and he's alleged to have embezzled money, and I remind Nigerians about that, I don't think that can be hate speech. I need to remind Nigerians about the antecedents of the person before you so that you'll be warned. Meanwhile, politicians are not the only stakeholders who are being monitored by government agencies to do the right thing. Broadcast media organizations also have important roles to play in ensuring the success of the 2023 general election. The National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, has equally read the riot act to broadcasters warning that they should guide against being used by politicians to spread violence among the people through the broadcast of hate speech, abusive languages, fake news, among others. I also use this opportunity to remind broadcasters not to allow any form of hate speech, fake news, derogatory or divisive remarks and any incendiary broadcast on their platforms. NBC is not going to take it lightly with any station. If you want to remain after the end of the election, you must make sure that you operate within the law. The die is now cast. Will the 18 political parties and their candidates be able to adhere strictly to the Electoral Act 2022 and promote issues of unity and even development in their campaigns? Only time will tell. Aluchi Amuda, OSBC News.